He realized early on that online leads is where everything was going. 50% of our business comes from our sphere or SOI. First thing that I, I believe we've learned in this process is... All right, guys. So uh, today is going to be all about lead generation. If you are trying to grow your business, whether you're a brand new agent or a seasoned agent, you need to have your lead generation dialed. But a lot of agents get confused. Like, what sort of lead should I go after? Should I buy leads? Should I door knock? Should I host open houses? What are the pros and cons? So we're gonna break that all down. We've been doing this for 20 years now. We've tried everything under the sun yeah. and we really, really dialed down a few lead sources, right? Yeah. Um, so let's break it down, yeah. Jay. Um, let's talk about maybe our journey and our experience with leads, what we're doing now. Yeah and um, maybe some of the things we've learned over the last 20 years of what works and what doesn't work, right? Yeah. And so let's start off with the mindset, right? I always like starting off with mindset. Like before we dive into the details is how do we look at lead generation? What, how are we approaching it in your mind? Yeah. When I say lead generation, what comes to your mind? What's the game you're playing? Yeah, you know, I mean, I, I think just kind of stepping back a little bit where in the beginning, you know, you get overwhelmed. There's so many options, so many different choices out there. Yeah. So I, I think the first thing that I, I believe we've learned in this process is don't don't choose too many, right? So, th you know, it, there's no magic bullet. There's no there's no magic lead source, yep. right? And, and so knowing that, you know, you really got to be strategic on picking what you're going to, you know, go deep in. Right, yeah. not wide, but go deep, and that's something that we've been trained in and taught. And so, that the mindset for me is don't don't go too wide, don't grab too many things, too many lead sources, yeah. and just really focus on a few and go really deep into those few. Yeah, right. You hit it on that. You hit the nail on the head. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. Don't go deeper with your lead sources instead of going wide and choosing yeah. a bunch of them. Right, and the reason why is if you choose too many, you're never gonna like really get good at any of them. Yeah. Right? And yeah. what I've learned is that lead sources will compound over time, yeah. right? Like you may try something right now, you may generate leads, and if you stick with it long enough, some of the leads you got today, you're gonna end up converting them next year or a year yeah. later. But if you switch to a different model or a different process or a different source, yeah. and you didn't give that enough time to play out, yeah. your efforts become wasted, right? So there is such thing as compounding over time. Right? Yeah, I believe that, and, and it's just, it's a simple idea of, just being consistent with that lead source, yeah. right? I mean, we talk about a lot of things and consistency is probably one of the main themes that we, we, we focus on, yeah. but it's the same thing in, in, in leads, right? And you, you just pick a few and be ridiculously consistent with those few. Yeah. Unfortunately, a lot of people, a lot of agents, you know, you know they, they, they want that magic bullet and so they're chasing the next thing, you know? I, I, there, there's a term for it, right? It, it's like, Shiny uh, object syndrome or chasing squirrels, chasing right? squirrels, right? Yeah. And so it's, you know, you really got to say, okay, look, I'm going to go ahead and choose these. You know, we, we have three, right? Yeah. We have our three and we're going to choose these three and really dive deep in how we're going to go really deep into these three and, and really say, hey, you know, we're committed to these three. Yeah. I think that's a big thing is be committed and don't expect results immediately. Yeah. Right. It's not that easy, but it is in the sense of just being consistent and knowing that the mindset going back to your mindset is knowing that it's not going to happen overnight. And if you be OK with that and just be consistent and go deep into each three and you can go in and share, you know, what, what our, our three main pillars are. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and so let's talk about probably the most important pillar, right? Yeah. I don't even probably even have to ask you, but you already know, right? What's the most important pillar you should have? When it comes to lead generation, it's going to be our sphere. It's, it's going to be your sphere, 100%. your SOI, whatever you want to call it. Friends, right? family, people you network with, people that are close with you, people that want to help you grow your business. Maybe people uh, you've already helped in the past, yes, right? Yes. And past so clients. That's going to be your biggest, biggest source of leads, right? Yeah. But that also takes time to nurture that. Yeah. Right. And so, in our business, right, twenty <clears throat> years later, at least fifty percent of our business comes from our sphere or SOI whatever you want to call it, right? These are either people we know, right? People we've done business with before, yep. people that trust us, people that have gotten to know us, and that sphere has grown and grown over time, Yeah. right? But in the beginning, when you're getting started, you may not have a sphere, Yeah. right? And that's the challenge for especially new agents or agents who haven't stuck with something for long enough. Yep. They don't have a sphere, so then they have to go out there and get cold business, right? Yep. Cold business that they can turn into their sphere eventually. 
Yeah. Right. But let's break it down for sphere. If you're someone that has a database, you have a sphere, you have people that are you, you can market to. What are we doing? What are we doing? The market but, to but going back, Enrique, like you mentioned something in the sense of, you know, you may not have a sphere, right? Yeah. Well, the thing is, we all have one. If you look at your phone, right, you look at your phone, you look <laughs> at your contacts, that's your sphere. Yeah. So if you're brand new into any business, any sales business, you know, obviously we're doing real estate and mortgages. But the first thing is you want to make an announcement to the people that love and support you. And those are the people that are on your phone. That's true. And, and it's, I, it's, I missed that. I, that's the first thing, mind. right? That's the first thing is, is build there. And, and let people know what you're doing. Let them know that you're committed to being a real estate agent, a loan officer. And the other part is by, by, you, by you posting content, by you showing value, that shows them that you're committed, yeah. right? So that would be my first step. If you're brand new into real estate or any type of sales, it's like, look at your phone, look at your family, yeah. friends, people that wanna support you, pour into them, let them know what you're doing. Um, and then also start creating content so that they know that you're serious about your business. Yeah, yeah, right? and you, you hit something right on the head is, is serious, right? Is you can't expect in the beginning that everyone's just gonna say, hey, I want you to help me sell and buy my house, right? Yeah. Especially if you're newer and they haven't seen you prove yourself yet, yeah. they haven't seen that you're serious about your business, or you don't have the track record, your aunts and uncles aren't just gonna say, hey, nephew, yeah. list my house. Yeah, let me list, list my $2 million my $2 property. million dollar house. No, they probably have agents that they have already seen and witnessed and seen their credibility that they would prefer to go with, right? Yeah. But sometimes you, they do throw you a bone, right? Like, hey, I wanna support you. Yeah. That could be a mistake sometimes, right? <laughs> but but you, can, you might get those shots, right? Yeah. Where you can yeah. go in there. So the point I'm trying to make is, you can't expect your friends, your family, the people around you to just want to do business with you right in the beginning. Yeah. You have to really go out there and show people that you are committed to your business. And over time, that perception will it start changes. to change, right? 100%. And the quickest Absolutely. way you can do that is reach out to them directly and start posting on social media. Yeah. Because if they're, you can reach out to them directly. I'll give you an example. Yeah. You're my uncle, I just got into real estate. Yeah. I'm gonna call you, hey uncle, it's Enrique, you know, I'm doing real estate now, so if you wanna buy or sell your house, you know, let me know and I'm here to help you. Yeah. What are you thinking in your mind? As my uncle. Well, one is one. I'm thinking. Well, you know, how much experience do you have, right? I mean, yeah. are, you know, you know, I don't know you, my nephew. I know you as my nephew, not yeah. as a real estate agent professional, right? So it's and you might be coming from another field. Like we have a lot of agents that come over from being engineers and you were doing, a teacher before, right? yeah, right? <laughs> and that's that's how we know you. So yeah, yeah. It, it's it's that's my first impression, right? If someone's calling me brand new, and what I like about what we do is you know obviously prg we have that track record and when we bring on agents that are transitioning or getting into real estate we we tell them to leverage the team leverage our experience right? so let me so now let me, yeah. let me let me do that call again yeah hey uncle jason it's enrique <laughs> hey uh i'm excited to give you some news i just got into real estate and i joined an amazing organization right my leaders have been in business for over 40 years combined you know, I joined this team that has over 700 five-star reviews. You know, we close hundreds of sales per year and we've been around in, yeah. in the Bay Area for 20 plus years. So I'm really excited to be a part of this team. And I have mentorship and people that are helping me build my career. Just wanna let you know I'm doing real estate now. So if you ever need anything, I wanna at least get an opportunity to show you some value, 100%. right? And so what I just did right there, right? That's a script, write that shit down, right? <laughs> that's a script, right? And you should it. be doing that with all your contacts in your, in your phone. If you got a 500 contacts, which yeah. a lot of us have a thousand plus contacts, right? Yeah. Call everybody and just say that, right? Yeah. But then that's just the first part of it. There you go. Right? Yeah. Because now what I gotta do is I gotta make sure, this is a strategy, I wanna make sure all those people are on my social media. Yeah. Because I just told you what I'm gonna do, now I gotta show you what I'm doing. 100%. So if I'm posting now on social media and I'm yeah. leveraging the wins from my, my office, maybe I don't have a lot of sales, but every time there's a new listing in my office, I'm posting it. Yeah. Or every time there's a sale, I'm posting it. Or I'm showing you while I'm out on tour, touring property or hosting open houses. I'm now showing you that, hey, it's not just what I told you, I'm showing you. Yeah. And then if I do that for, if I just add that to my, my agenda, and I come back to you a year from now, uncle. Yeah. Now, now what's your perception? Of now, now it resonates with me that now you're the real estate agent. Yeah. Right. That you actually, and it, again, you, you mentioned something a year later, right? It's not, it, it's, it's going to take some time. Yeah. And I think that that's important to understand is that that phone call, you may not get now business. Yep. Right. But you're planting that seed and then you're watering that seed by all the actions that you do for that year. 
right? And now when you when you when you're going to a wedding and where you're going to a birthday party, you're going to Christmas, whatever it may be, the first question that your uncle's going to ask you is, "So, Enrique, how's the market?" Yeah. Right. And, and then now you're becoming that, that conversation. You're 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 part of that real estate conversation. Yeah. And then right. if you stick with it long enough, now your uncle is like, hey, he's not a newbie no more. Yeah. Now, hey, my my ne- now he's you're, he starts telling people, hey, my nephew's in real estate. Yeah. Right. If now you he, need anything, he's he's ready to. Hear he's that. at work yeah. telling his coworkers, oh, you're looking to buy it. Talk to my nephew. He's yeah. he's he's on a really good organization, a really good squad, or whatever. Yeah. Right. But that perception starts to change over time. Right. hundred percent. And so you can 100%. fast forward that by using social media and just putting yourself out there. Yeah. But you, you just got to back to what you said. It's not going to happen overnight. It's not. You're yeah. not going to post something and then all of a sudden everyone's lined up at your door by yourself. Right. <laughs> yeah. And, and again, there's so many different strategies to reach out to your SOI. Yeah. Right. I mean, one is like we said, the, the most effective is definitely making the call you know, and, and, and posting on social media. The other is even making a video and texting that to your family and friends, yep. right? I mean, I have a, a family a group, text group, you know, where, where again, I can I can send all my, my invites for our events. I send, you know, videos of what's happening in, in the industry. Yeah. Um, and again, so that's, that's a way for you to leverage just your SOI immediately is look at your contacts. Yep. Uh, and then you go like this, you have contacts in your Instagram, you have contacts on your Facebook, and then you have your contacts on your phone. On your phone. So, I right? mean, right there, that that's that's a database to get started uh, where, and yeah, and then they're there to support you, yep. right? So, so what, I even, level deck. what I even do is when I go on Facebook or Instagram, I start looking for people that I haven't added. Because yeah. you'll see people that you went to high school with that popped up, right? Yeah. And they're not my friends. I'm like, add them. Yeah. Because I just want to put them in my environment. I just want to help, help have them see what I'm doing yeah. because now I'm planting seeds indirectly. It's not like I'm calling them, yeah. but they're watching me, right? They're seeing these things pop up and then sooner or later, oh yeah, Enrique's doing real estate, yeah. right? And so, it, you know, 20 years later, everybody that knows me knows I do real they estate. Know, yeah. I'll yeah. run into someone like, I'll go to, uh, at the store or at the mall that I haven't seen in forever. Hey, what's up, bro? You still doing real estate? Yeah, yeah. man. Hey, how's the market, right? Yeah, yeah. And then boom, <laughs> we start the conversation and then that the seed gets planted there. Yeah. And then opportunities come up. And, and, and for us, it also helps because again, obviously we, we do you know real estate, but then we have people that want a career in real estate. Yeah. Right? So they know that we are also coaching, mentoring, uh, creating opportunity for other agents. So if, if a family member or a friend, if they're interested in real estate, we're the, you know, they, they call us and we, you know, we kind of explain, you know, what the process is and what to expect. Yep. Right. Uh, um, and then, so SOI, right? There's other things that we do too. You mentioned events, right? Yeah. We've been doing events for like, probably like 10 years now. Yeah. Right. So let's talk about the events. Um, we just had our big event, right? In the summer. Yeah. Tell us a little about that event and yeah. why we do it. Yeah. I think, you know, with the events, it's one is hosting the actual events. The other part of it is when we say like nurturing your SOI, it is actually reaching out to them and inviting them to that event. Right? Yeah. That, that's all part of that process, right? So there's the event and there's a process and there's ways to go ahead and maximize that opportunity with yeah. that event, right? And I think that's really important. It's not just, hey, let me just post it that, you know, I have an event. It's now you have to actively go out there, reach out to your family, friends, past clients, business partners, and let them know what you're doing and inviting them personally. And again, sometimes they may not be able to make it. Yeah. And, and that's totally fine. But again, at least they know that, you know, that you're thinking of them. And again, it's it's real estate related, mortgage related. And, it, and, and our event, our event is it's yeah. awesome. Yeah, right? it's I mean, keeping you top of mind, there you right? Go. There you go. So we just have our, our summer event. It's a big barbecue event. We call it Day at the Park. We have live music. We have food, raffles. Been doing this. It's just gotten better over the years, yeah. right? It's almost 10 years now. And it started off as like a small little event, right? And now we're having like two, 300 people there. Yeah. Live um, music. Live yeah, music yeah, and yeah. everything. It's a fun time, right? And so now there's people that have come to our events every single year that have been supporting us and we get business from them, right? Yeah. And then we invite our past clients, our friends, our family. Yeah. So that's a big event, right? Yeah. Now, if you're a solo agent or whatever, maybe you can't afford to do a big event, but you could do a small event. Yeah. You can you can host an event at your office. Yeah. If you can host a happy hour at a bar, right? Maybe you invest a couple thousand bucks, or maybe you invest a thousand dollars into this event, 
and you invite all your your past clients or your closest friends and family yeah and that's your way of just giving back and staying top of mind with them right? and, and i'm even thinking Enrique, you, you said like you know again if you're starting out you may not have a lot of money to to really host a big event yeah the other thing you can do is you can also do like a fundraiser a donation right yeah. you can do a you know backpack for for where the kids are going back to school you can do you know the the toy drive that we do where where you can actually invite or invite people to your your office and they can drop off a toy maybe you can have a you know you can have a drink with them or have some you know some snacks with them and just have that conversation yeah where it's you're you're actually helping the community and then you're also staying top of mind with your family friends and past clients yeah absolutely right? and so we've done events and we'll sprinkle different events throughout the year our big one is the summer one and then we'll have some seasonal events and stuff yeah. like that that may be a little bit smaller but yeah. the whole point is you're staying top of mind, you're hosting people, even if they don't show up, you're calling them and inviting yeah. them and that gives you a chance to connect with them, yeah. right? Yeah. And then now they're, you're thinking of them, so now they're thinking of you when it's time to buy, sell, or potentially refer yeah. a client, right? Yeah. Okay, let's yeah. move on, right? Yeah. SOI, a lot of strategy there. There's <laughs> many there's ways you tons, can do it. There's tons of stuff we can go into. There's way more, I mean, right? Yeah. But I wanna give you guys an overview, right? Yeah, but we spent it. the most time on that one because that's probably the most important one but you have to have that delayed gratification because it will take some time. And you you mentioned it early on. It is it is literally between forty five to fifty percent of our business. Yep. Right. And and those are the you know family and friends. Those are the best to work with. Right. Yeah. And they know you, trust you. And again, no, I, I agree. It is. I know we spent some time on it, but it, it makes sense because it's a big part of our of our, of our business. Yep. Now, if I want to get some more now business. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I think you should have a way that you're generating buyers, mm -hmm. right? And a way that you're generating sellers, right? And that's what we've added as our pillars, right? Yeah. With buyers, there's many ways to get buyers, right? Yeah. You can work open houses. You can obviously get buyers from your friends and family. Um, you can online leads. Online leads, right? Which right. that's a big one for us, right? Yeah. So let's talk about that. We're partners with Zillow through their Zillow Flex program. Before getting into Zillow Flex, we were investing into online leads, yeah. realtor.com, buying leads from Zillow, other platforms. But yeah. we realized early on, you know, that online leads is where everything was going. Yeah. Because that's how I shop, right? Yeah. I go online. So if I'm going online, that means everyone else is going yeah, we, online. The right? consumers are online. Consumers are online, right? And you know, what you have to know about online leads is there's pros and cons, right? I would say the pro of online leads is it gives you leverage. Yeah. Right? You can literally pay money and get a platform and get leads to come in. Yep. And so you immediately have people to talk to, right? Yeah. Now you can either pay up front where you're spending advertising dollars or there's a lot of referral pl platforms like Zillow Flex or like some of these other ones where they get a referral fee once the deal closes. Mm -hmm. But the whole point is an online leads is gonna give you a steady stream of opportunity yes. that comes in. And a lot of times, I mean, you, you don't have to leave your house to get an online lead, no. right? Your phone could just ring and you get to talk to someone no. and it's a lead and then you gotta take it from there, right? Anything else you can add of why why we chose online leads no, are the benefit? No, no, I mean, um, again, yeah, online leads, I think, I mean, you nailed it. it, it it's it's something where it's coming to you. Um, and I think uh, what where you where you got to think a little ahead is that once you do a good job with that online lead, that goes back into what we first talked about. That becomes yeah. your SOI. Now you're now you are within their network. Now you since you did such you did such a good job. Now you have opportunities to help their family and friends. Yeah. And I, I think a lot of times people look at the online lead as that one that one shot. No. But it's no. It is your shot to perform. Yep. It is your opportunity to wow these clients by your service and give them great product knowledge and give them value so that they want to go ahead and refer you business. Yep. And that's how you build a long-term business. Um, and I just want, I think that's important to kind of really state because a lot of times, like I said, a lot of people think it's just one time, but if you do a good job, you're going to get referrals from that as well. Yeah. And what you're referring to, what that's called in the business world is lifetime value. Right? There's a lifetime value of a lead. If I get a lead today from Zillow or any of these platforms, even if I have to pay 30, 35% referral fee, which some people are gonna frown at that, <laughs> oh, that's a lot of money. But then I say, well, what if an agent referred you a deal? How much would you pay them? Yeah. Probably 25, 30, 40%, right? Yeah. Whatever that might be. So it's in line with the industry standard, but what's the lifetime value of that lead? 
if you if, can, if you do the right way, if you do it the right yeah. way, if you do a great job, and then you make it part of what we talked about in the beginning, your, your SOI, and then you nurture it, and you do the events and all these things, and now that lead is starting to give you other referrals, yes. right? And so yeah. our best agents on our team are doing exactly that. They're taking these online leads. Yeah. They're using that to get into this world of this yeah. new client, right? They're doing a great job, and then they're getting three or four referrals off of it. And on the referrals, we don't pay anything yeah. to the, you, right? Yeah. Your, your that, cost that, goes, that's, that's goes your down. That's your SOI now, That's right? your SOI yeah. now, right? Now you get to work that. Um, and especially if you're brand new, going yeah. back to your first point, when you're brand new, okay, you have you have your SOI, they don't know you, that you're doing real estate, now you have op an opportunity to get these online leads. Yeah. Well, that's your opportunity to go out there, show value, so that you can go ahead and gain some, some now business. Well, I would challenge you to not even when you're brand new, yeah. right? I think it's when you're any agent. Right? Oh, yeah, yeah. If you're running a business, you need to have a steady stream of 100%. leads coming in. There's a lot of agents that I see that brag like, I only do referrals only. Yeah. And then what I say is, well, can you tell me exactly how many referrals how you you're going to get? Yeah. How do you scale that, right? Some year, and that's going to be that's going to go up and down depending on the market, right? Yeah. If the market's really hot, you may have more referrals that year. But what happens when the market slows down? You see all the agents suffer who are only doing referrals. Mm -hmm. But our business continued to go up because we had all these leads coming in yeah. that supplemented that, right? Mm -hmm. So we're doing both. Yeah. So if you're a smart business person, you're going to have these incoming leads coming in. You're also going to still do the referrals and you're just going to repeat this process and make it into, yeah. you know, your, your lead generation cycle basically. Yeah. Right. And, and no, I, I think no, hundred percent, whether you're new or, or a seasoned agent, that's a way you can go ahead and actually scale your business. Yeah. Right? You can really scale your business by knowing, Hey, listen, if I receive a hundred leads, I'm going to convert at a 5%. That's five more transactions. Then you drop those into your SOI. Now you start nurturing them. Now they're coming to your events. Now out of those five, maybe you receive two referrals from them every six months or every year. Yeah. Right? Now you can start really, and the main thing is tracking your numbers, right? Yeah. So that now you can actually scale. And then you can say now, okay, if I get 200 leads, I convert at 5%. Now I'm getting 10. Or if I fix my conversion, right? There, there's all that. Once you have that opportunity coming in, you can go ahead and straighten your skills so that you can grow your business and scale it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, online leads isn't the only way to no. go out there and generate, you know, buyer business. You can also do open houses, which a lot of agents do. Open houses are great, in yeah. my opinion. It's better than nothing. That's, that's kind of what I think. Yeah. But if I had to choose between open houses and online leads, uh, me as a business person and thinking of how to work smarter versus harder, I would rather do online leads. Yeah. Right. I'm not saying we don't do open houses. When we have listings, we are going to market our listing. Yep. We are going to do open houses. We do meet sellers that way as well. But I would say I can get a lot more transactions done by working online leads than the time it takes me to go show up to an open house, set up, Get, try to get people to sign in. And so you got to weigh those things out, yeah. right? Um, and, and I agree. They I both think they, they both work. 100%. That's what I say. I think they both work. I think we look at things where we call it like sweat equity and check equity. Exactly. Right? And, and so when you look at the, the check equity, is going to be a online leads, whether yeah. you're paying a referral fee or you're paying up front. Yep. Right? And, and what I like is, you know, is a combination of both, right? If you're not, if you don't have enough online leads, well, then you should be at an open house. Yeah. Right? You should, bottom line, you, you need to get that opportunity. You need to get in front of people. You need to be, you need to be speaking real estate and, and finance. Yep. Now, the great thing about an online leads is sometimes you have so many online leads or buyers where you're actually showing property instead of doing an open house. So yeah. you're actually doing dollar producing activity immediately yeah. versus at the open house, which is still great. But now you are sitting there, going ahead, getting that lead. Then you got to nurture that lead that weekend, nurture it during the week, and go ahead and try to set up a showing for them later on. Yeah. Right. Or or listen appointment. Right? Yeah. And you could do the opposite. Like if you just say committed to, I'm going to work open houses every single weekend, and that's my lead generation pillar. And you mapped out a plan, and you're working, you know, eight open houses a, a month. Yeah. Right. Like every weekend, or you could even work some during the week. I've seen uh -huh. people do that. Yeah. Right. But the problem. I still have a problem. I'm still biased, <laughs> I guess, right? The problem I have is it's not predictable. Yeah. Online leads can become predictable because I can say if I spend X amount of dollars, I get X there amount you. of leads and I convert X amount based off our numbers, right? You may have a booming open house and you may have those open houses. You guys are you guys have all been there where nobody shows up. Yeah. Or you got one person that shows up and they're already working with an agent, and it's it's dead, right? Yeah. And you spent four hours there. So you could do both. Yeah. But Think about what's my long-term game plan, um, but you got to have something, right? 100%. The whole point is you need to have something, either working the open houses or getting online leads 
to try to generate some now buyer business. Yeah, right? and even going back just to open houses, I mean, if you look at the builders, builders have an open house every single day. Yeah. Right. So if you have a listing, why can't you have an open house every day? Right. Why not? Right. Yeah. And, and look at this, Enrique. You, yeah, yeah. Saturdays and Sundays is a traditional way of doing it. You know, that's where you get all the buyers. But, but again, if someone comes to my open house on a Wednesday, yeah. they're probably pretty serious, right? They're coming out on a Thursday or, or a Tuesday. They're probably pretty serious. And if you have that opportunity with the vacant property where you can go ahead and jump on your laptop, still work from that open house and keep it open, there may be some opportunity if that's the route you wanted to go. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, let's touch a little bit on sellers, right? And what we're doing to generate seller business, yeah. right? Why don't you go ahead and, and, and talk about yeah, that? Yeah, so, so with our seller business, what we're doing right now is we have a team of inside sales agents where they are reaching out to potential homeowners with certain criteria where, where they may need, a, uh, need to sell or need some information about selling. Yeah. And so what we do is we, we have a system where they're generating these opportunities for our real estate agents. Uh, we call them hand raisers. So these people that may have some interest in selling, we go ahead and have the ISA reach out. They set that appointment up for our real estate agent and they go ahead and you know kind of educate the seller to see if, it's, if it makes sense for us to go out there and view the property. Uh, maybe list a pro list the property or find you know what what is their next step to 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 probably selling their house or possibly selling their house yeah and so you know these ISAs or inside sales agents right they're calling over the phone so yeah. phone prospecting which if whoever's watching this you can do that yourself we have agents on our team who also pick up the phone yeah. and they want to target certain neighborhoods and they're looking for sellers right so they're also calling sellers letting them know what the market's doing, how much their home could be worth, seeing if they want to, if they want to sell, if they want to buy, if they want to refinance, they want to refinance, yeah. right, on the lending side, and they're picking up leads from that, right? Yeah. And then you got to nurture those leads and try to convert them. Yeah. What I find with sellers is it's not as easy as buyers. A buyer can walk into an open house or contact you online through an online lead, and they want to go tour homes today, and they want to transact right away. Yeah. Right. So I feel like there's you're gonna do a, a lot more work of probably showing homes and all that stuff, but you can really pick up deals right now. Yeah. Where sellers, when someone thinks about selling their home, it's usually a long drawn out plan, right? Like yeah, I don't just big move. sell a, overnight. Yeah. When I talk to you about selling my home, I may not actually pull the trigger for six months, a year, a year and a half, yeah. right? So I think you still, it's important that you generate those leads, but just know that you're gonna to have to nurture them over the course of time, yeah. right? And, and I think, again, you said something, nurture it. I, I, I think any lead source you have, you have to have a nurturing system process, Yeah. right? And I think it's, it's important where we do all this work, you do with that open house, you get these leads, but what do you actually do with these leads, right? We have these ISAs that are generating these listing opportunities, but yeah, if, if they're waiting a year to sell because they're waiting to retire, well, what do we do with that lead? How do we nurture that lead? How do we stay on top of mind with that lead? Yeah. So I think there's, and that's why it's important to go deep, right? It's like, okay, now I have this lead. Now, what is the process? What's going to happen, you know, during, during that process, if they want to sell now, if they want to sell in six months, if they want to sell when they retire in two years, how are we going to be able to nurture that and, and make sure that we, we uh, have that opportunity to gain that, that business? Absolutely. Absolutely. Now there's other ways to generate seller leads, right? Mm -hmm. Like you can cold call, then that is also sweat equity, yeah. right? or you can pay someone, like we're paying a team of ISAs that we have on our team, mm -hmm. right? And so that's, we're using check equity yeah. to generate those opportunities, right? But either way, they both work, right? So it's either yeah. you're doing it, or you eventually you get to a point where you can pay someone to generate those leads for you, yeah. and then now you're spending more time on trying to convert the leads versus generate the leads, yeah. right? There's also farming is a great way, yeah. right? We have some of our um, agents that do some that. Some of our agents do farming, right? They want to farm certain neighborhoods. They're sending out flyers, postcards. They're door knocking, right? So they're yeah. also farming by just knocking on the door mm -hmm. and working a certain neighborhood that they're committed to, yeah. right? The pros and cons of farming is farming is great, I think, because over time you can build your name in a neighborhood, right? And if you become the realtor of choice, yeah, the neighborhood might, expert, the neighborhood expert, right, which takes a long time to do, yeah, right. But there's many, many agents out there who have been doing this for a long time, and they've built their name in the neighborhood, and now people call them to list yeah. their homes, which is great. But just know it's going to take years and years and years to gain some sort of market share yeah. in a neighborhood, right? The other thing is with farming 
it does, it costs money too, yeah. right? Like if you're mailing out to 5,000 homes or 10,000 homes. A month. A month, right? That should probably be like the minimum. It's probably right? the minimum, right? Because you're you're probably getting a one or 2% response, not even not less even. than 1% yeah, response than one. rate from your flyers. You're gonna have to mail at least 10,000 flyers a month times whatever, 50 cents yeah. or 75 or 80 cents a flyer with postage, postage keeps going up. Yeah. But if you have money to spend, 100%. right? And you've gotten your business to that point, you can do that and it works. And yeah. I know a lot of agents who 100%. do that, right? But they spend a lot of money on the flyers, Yeah. but they get X amount of calls that come in and out of those calls, they sign X amount of listings, right? Yeah. And so yeah. you gotta do the math, right? Yeah, to see yeah, what your math. return is. And, and again, it may make sense if you're getting a $2 million listing yeah. and you're spending X amount, right? It, de it definitely makes sense. And, and so I, I think it's, it's important to understand that there's more than one way to go after sellers and buyers. Absolutely. I think uh, just may, understanding that it's going to take time. You got to be committed, right? Yep. You got to be truly committed to it. And when I look at, when I look at the farming, you know, some of the, some of the um, coaching that we've had, mm -hmm. it's like expect not to receive anything for the first eight months meaning not to receive a deal for the first eight oh, yeah. months. So weather that storm, mm -hmm. right? Plant that seed, water it. And as long as you go into it, that mindset, it's totally fine. It's 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 not fine when you go into the mindset of I'm gonna send out these 5,000 flyers expecting a listing, you know, that, no. that same month. It's possible, but it's not, it's not likely. Well, the other thing you gotta take into account is let's say you spend the money and let's say someone does call you and they're thinking about listing their home. Are they gonna go with you? Yeah. Right. That's, true. That's a whole nother part of the deal. Right. It's yeah. like you have to convert them. Right. Do you have the experience, the knowledge, the track record, the negotiation skills to go out there and deliver a listing presentation and do it at a high level and get them to see you as the realtor? Right. Yeah. Who knows if they're also talking to two or three other yeah. realtors and now you're competing. Right. So you have to be really good because you can spend money on leads and you get the lead but you can't close it. You gotta be able to convert. Right, you gotta be able to convert. And you gotta so have all that back end. Yeah, that all, all that stuff. And let's say you do get them to sign the listing, are you experienced enough to now take that listing to the finish line, yeah. right? Do you know how to market it, put it on the market, negotiate? That, and, there's and, a lot and, of moving parts, and, and, right? And, and again, not just to get to the finish line, but to do it at a high level. A to good experience, it, right? To give a good experience, to get that five-star experience, because again, what do you want? You wanna give them a five-star experience because then you want to put them part of your SOI, yeah. part of your sphere, and then you want to get the referrals. So all those, all those things you got to you got to do all those things at a high level yeah. so that you can start building your real estate and mortgage business. Yeah, and notice how we keep re referring back to SOI, right? Like all these cold <laughs> lead sources. The goal, this is the game you're playing, yeah. right? Is generate leads, however you generate them. Do a great job. Yeah. Make them part of your database, your SOI, and then nurture the crap out of them. Yeah so that they keep giving you referrals. That's yeah. the game you're playing. That's it. That's Whichever it. ones you choose to do, that's <laughs> gonna be like, what What resonates with my personality? What can I do every single day consistently? Yeah. What do I have the budget for, yeah. right? What do I love doing? Because yeah. if you don't love doing it, if you don't love making calls, yeah. and that's what you're trying to do, you're probably yeah. not gonna if do you it. Don't love open houses, you don't love open houses, door knocking, or door knocking, if, right? If you don't like prospecting, don't do real estate. Don't do real estate, right? <laughs> you're gonna have to choose something, right? Yeah. They're not. None of them are gonna be easy, but you're gonna to have to choose the one that you are willing to show up every day yeah, and commit to, right? Absolutely. Now, I'll, we're gonna wrap this up because yeah. we can go on forever. There's a lot of nuances that come into play, but hopefully what you got out of this is you got some ideas on how to set up your lead generation. Mm -hmm. We told you a little about what we're doing and what we have realized works for us and what we have gravitated to, yeah. right? Amongst all the different ways, right? Yeah. It's not a one size fits all. There's many no. ways to do it. If you go talk to five agents, they're going to tell you they're doing five different things. Yeah. But make sure whatever you pick, pick a pick a couple of them. Yeah. Right? Pick a couple and just go and all go in. Go all in. <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> That's the main thing, uh, guys. If you need any help with this, setting up your lead generation, or you want to jump on a coaching call, yeah. right? And just to pick our brain and mastermind, and we yeah. can even give you some feedback on what you're currently doing. Yeah or show you adjustments that you can make in your current business plan, we're here to help guys. Go to meetenrique.com, book yeah. a call with me or Jason on there, yeah. and we'll we'll touch base and we'll point you in the right direction yeah. and we'll see if we can help you at yeah. the end of the day. Yeah, right? definitely. Reach definitely. out to us if you need anything, guys. Thank you. Thanks, guys.